St Mary's to that. We used to be made to get up like the start of the day was seven seven AM. Um we were got dressed, got dressed, and then we were paraded outside onto the main to this big yard. Um it didn't matter what kind of weather, rain, snow, whatever, it didn't matter. We had to kneel in this yard and a concrete yard, kneel in this yard, and uh, we weren't allowed to raise our heads until these nuns give us a command. And obviously then you're talking about 600 lads, four to 600 lads. And then we had to pray, raise our heads and pray to the statue um, for all the sins, etc., etc., what we committed. And, you know, um, I suppose one of the main sins in my life was being in the flaming homes, you know. Um, so after receiving several punishments, I decided, right, one way to get back at them was the statue and that just built up an idea in my head. Maybe it was a childish prank. But to me it seemed like the right thing to do at the time and uh, it was just late one night, I woke Palomine up, Mario. Um, we had planned this and we just, because we had the paint and all that, so we had been planned to do it. And we climbed out onto the, the roof, this building three stories up. Um, and we spent a couple of hours painting it black you got to imagine that the sisters had the back to this statue. They, nobody would look up this statue until we all like really looked together, because this was the sacred part of the homes. Um, so we're all there, of course. We knew, knew what we'd done, and uh, we're all kneeling. To be quite truthful with you, I was fighting a flaming look up, but uh, we were trying to look, and of course, when the, when the sisters looked up and seen this black statue, even the lads, it was just a big shock of amazement. And of course, then the squeal was my name, which always was, you know. And of course, I was still covered in paint, and so was Mario. Um, I'd had some beatings in these homes, but this was, this was a beating beyond all others. Um, a thing I missed out uh, earlier part was one of the most horrendous punishments. Part of these punishments was I remember this big wooden box, like an old, old chest. And um, used to get locked in there for, could be hours. But the beaten, the beaten, I mean, um, to me, they must have been getting a big kick out of what they were doing to beat kids up like this. Uh, so severely where I couldn't go to school for a month. Uh, I was so bad. Um, but before I was actually sent to school, be getting on for the month, I actually broke into this cubicle, belonged to this Miss Malone. She was she wasn't a, a, a nun, she was a worker, which was a vile, evil, horrible woman. Um, I took some money from her cubicle, and my clothes were there in that cubicle, I got dressed and I was away, heading for Newcastle. criminal side of it, things is, I um, would say at 15, we went on a crime spree, spray, me and this pal of mine, who also ran off, was off from the approved school, and went on a crime spree up and down the country, and I learnt more with this kid than, well, I knew nothing about burglary or nothing like that, but I learnt a hell of a lot. I sent a hull, um, after, this was after Staffordshire Mental Hospital, um, I was transferred to Hull, Borstal, which was a tough place. Um, I didn't last a month there, uh, I would say just over a month or something like that. Then I was transferred to Rochester, which is uh, Kent. So it was actually when I was doing a stint in the block that um, 
PDI was taken off the PE and he it actually said, do not let it take on boxing. You've got so much aggression in you. Would you not like to, to give it a shot? And I just more or less told him to get lost. You know, then but when I came out the block, I took up his offer and I actually put us in with um, a skull slide who, who had a bit of a name. He really was a boxer. And uh, they tell this kid to take it easy on me. And the next thing you knew, this kid was lying where he was on his back outside the ring. I just ripped in and let loose on him. I had no technique and that was progressing there, so I was picked for like the boxing team actually in Boston. Um, but, like always, I seem to make a mess of things, so it was back in the block. Anyway, we progressed from there into the number one targets in the northeast of England. In fact, all over the country because we were grafting all over the country, whether it was POs, whether it was banks, uh, whether it was workmen's clubs. But that's the place we, we would target. Coming away each weekend with no less than five, six grand a weekend Upwards, we're talking about upwards. If we've done a bank, I mean, different matter. We've done a PO, different matter. You could come away with 20, 30 grand. They built a special unit in Market Street on the top floor. Um, and it was this unit, we were informed of this, this unit was specially made out for our firm. Then it reached a stage um, where we were, in actual fact, the only way they got, could get wet was set her up and he slipped somebody in who we thought was a good grafter at the time. They slipped him in to her. So they'd obviously get to him. Um, and it just so happened that um, he actually marked with card for a, um, a lot of these gas stations, a lot of coaches. You know, his big business over that side of the water, you know, Chester Lee Street way, all that way, you know. Um, but anyway, we got a card mark for his house, which was near Sackleson. Um, and the mark was that the safe was upstairs in the upstairs bedroom. So what happened was, this kid that we were grafting with didn't turn up for the graft. So of course, we went ahead with it, myself, Mario. In me. Um, when we got there, we didn't click even then. There was a brand new ladder there. The garage was wide open. All the tools we needed were there. But this was all that we knew afterwards. This was the setup. So we hide the ladder up, got the bell off, uh, dismantled the system. Then we got in the French French windows like these stick the doors, we just stick the doors and got in. Um, entered the sitting room and uh, Mickey was in front of me, I was in the middle, Mario was at the back. And we're going up the stairs, obviously, to go and get the, the safe. The next minute, the bedroom door crashed open. And I've seen so many police getting out there, they're all trying to beat each other to get out, you know? But anyway, I got the chance to turn, Mario was off like a shot. Um, he always told me he couldn't run, but I'll tell you what it is, he would have won a gold medal that day. Um, I would have gotten away, because I actually got outside, but this, this polish threw a trunch in, lucky shot and it hit me on the back, I just, everything went black then.
But anyway, we've done this other picture, Dan and Egg. And once again, this was a card mark. Please again, waiting for it. So this was two jail sentences that I went down, down for. Um, and I just thought, go, what, what am I doing? I'm going into prison. OK, I don't mind. If I've done something, fair enough. You know, if, if I'm back to rights, you know, me against them, then, then fair enough. Uh, but to actually do the jail for setups was, was not, it wasn't my cup of tea. I mean, because when I went in jail, I didn't get no remission, not like that. My jail was done, the only way I could do it was the hard way, which was every day I would lose. I had more time getting added on. Every day in the block, every day in the padded cells, liquid cosh, uh, electric treatment, shock treatment, you know, to go through all this, you know, that's the only way I could do me jail, you know. Um, and that's why I actually, before then, resigned me sort of dying in prison. But then, with these two setups, I was actually in Strongbox when it dawned on me, and I, I thought, what the fuck am I, what am I doing? You know, and uh, I thought, I can't, I can't just go on with this. There's got to be more to life than, than just this. Um, so I decided, right, that's it. And I told the screws that all I want to do is get on with my bed and leave me alone and I'll give you no grief. And that was the way it went. I could just do out in the neck then, just to do, let me do anything to piece of eyes. I could walk in the centre where nobody else could and I could go and make myself a cup of tea if I wanted. You know, uh, that's the way I had it, and that's the control I had. But it was me again controlling things. Same with the violence, I was controlling it. I was always in control. You know, <clears throat> and it was the same in the homes. I felt I was in control all the time. I could rise above these sisters, I could rise above all these prisons, rise above all these people. You know, if I couldn't feel any pain, Mario carried on grafting, I wrapped it in. In here, this is the real life. This is my life. And this is what I should have been. You know, instead of being a, 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 a thing of the system, this is what I should have been. This is where I would have been happy. I probably, if they put stuck me in a boxing ring, I probably would never have spent a day in a prison. Um, so like I say, um, to actually, Turn my life around um, for the past 22 years, taking lads off drugs, keeping lads out of prison. So now I'm happy and content with what I've got here. And you've seen the lads, the lads is on here. They're happy. You know, you've just been talking to a couple, a couple of lads, what I could have pointed out, with bad criminal records, who are straightened out. Drug, drugs, they will tell you. Drug abuse, which they've done themselves, that I've taken away from. And they've said they wish they'd met me when they were younger.